Okay, now it's time to really kick the tires of this radial velocity simulator. Now, you should have already discovered, if you've been doing the student guide, that you can vary the mass of your planet, make it as small or as big as you want. Notice that, that the preset for option A is that it's a planet the mass of Jupiter. And notice that it's not at Jupiter's um, distance from our sun. So it's actually a Jupiter-sized planet, but it's at 1 AU from the star. So it's actually at an Earth orbit from the star. So it's a massive planet uh, put relatively close to the star. But again, you can change that as well. And you also have the ability to change the eccentricity of the orbit. You can make it less circular if you wish. So those are the, some of the things you play around with on page three of the student guide. Sta page four, you actually play with the what's called inclination. Um, notice when we look at this multiple view, when we're looking um, from the Earth, we are looking essentially edge on. We are at inclination 90. Notice what happens when we change the inclination. So that's what you're essentially going to be doing for part of uh, page four. Then you're going to also change the longitude. So again, play around with it, follow the, the student guide, and hopefully you'll get a, gain an appreciation as to what longitude means in this simulator. Okay, then finally, as you move on to page six, it mentions instead of just using the theoretical curve, you're actually allowed to show simulated measurements. So this is the actual data that these little curves come from. And so essentially what you need, what you're asked to do is to figure out, uh, given a certain amount of noise, uh, sometimes it's set to be three, sometimes, and, and you have number of number of measurements, that sort of thing. The question is, would you be able to, oops, you know, given the data, if you, if you turn off that little curve, would you be able to essentially see a pattern here? Well, certainly with these settings, you can. And so you're asked to, to play around with the settings a little bit and answer a few questions on page six and into page seven to determine whether or not the properties of that particular planet and star system uh, are suitable for giving you, uh, you know, the, uh, a signal that would indicate that there is indeed a planet there. So it's really essentially trying to teach you what kind of planets would give you a, a, a good signal and which ones would you not get any signal from? And that's essentially what you wind up doing on this table on page eight. It asks you to um, essentially uh, set parameters. So for example, the first row, they want you to have a mass of 0.1. So you want to have a planet that's got a mass of 0.1. And they want it to be very close to the star, only 0.1 AUs away. And let's see what the other thresholds are. They want us to have um, a noise of three meters per second. So we've already got that set in here. And so, great. So the question is, would you see a signal here? Yeah, sir, you know, I, I kind of see a curve here. In fact, you can kind of throw in the curve. And then they, they already have the amplitude. Notice that the amplitude the highest point of this is around, and you can actually put your cursor over there, it's around 9 meters per second. So your table says 8.9, close enough. Notice what the period period is, 11 days, 11.5 days. Is it detectable? Well, certainly. You know, we, we've got a, a, real, a real signal there. I can pick out that curve. So yes, it is detectable. And uh, so there, it only, you would only have a rationale if you're in the no or maybe category. So in this case, uh, the amplitude is certainly big enough. So you know, the amplitude not uh, amplitude too small option, that's not a problem. And the period too big is also not a problem. Notice that the, in the instructions here, you're told that you've got like a mission of eight years to, to collect data. Well, how many days is eight years? It's you know, 20, 2,500 years, maybe 3,000 years. Um, well, so, so certainly if this planet orbits in 11.5 days, I would be able to pick this up. Um, you're only going to run into problems with the period if the period is much, much longer than the time that you've got your study for. Okay. And then finally, I'm going to try to knock out this last simulator, um, the exoplanet transit simulator. Just play around with this thing. So instead of looking for velocities and looking for Doppler shifts, here you're actually going to see dips in the light curve of this system. So click on, let's see. 
All right. So notice that we can move our planet around here. So notice that we're actually we're gathering the light from the star. And the star's light does drop off a little bit. Now notice it doesn't change by very much. It's a fraction, but it is at least enough to be detected. So we're detecting the transit, the passing of the planet in front of the star. We're seeing a dip in that light curve that tells us uh, a couple of things. It tells us uh, something about the diameter of the planet as well as the diameter of the star by looking at those dips. So play around with that. You know, follow the instructions, see what kind of stars would, or what kind of planet would actually give you an eclipse uh, that would be detectable and uh, kind of understand why some planets are suitable to be detected using the transit method and some just are not going to be able to be picked up using the transit method. So that, that's pretty much it. That's all the functionality. Again, you can learn about uh, the eccentricity. You can play with the inclination here. Um, you can play with longitude if you wish. That's not really going to make much of a difference. But uh, have fun and, and learn a little bit more about how astronomers search for planets that are going around other stars other than our own.